If we get shot at, we'll just run. <laughs> You're well known in these parts. Oh, what's the story with this street? Crack related. It was way worse than this. Much worse, yeah. So everybody, to a certain extent, they're all lonely. Lonely inside, lonely mentally. This is the Skid Row police station, and here's drug addicts right here. It was easy for me. I had great role models, had great opportunities. These people had none of that. A lot of people are addicted to the streets. So I'm addicted to the wildness. I've had guns pulled out of my face. I've been conned and robbed every which way you can imagine. Oh, you want me to get a job and shower and get dressed and pay taxes and all that shit? Fuck that. Hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars trying to fix these people that are broken. And I don't even know if that'll work. It's controversial, but I think about this a lot. You have to change the way you think before you can make better decisions. All right, guys, here we are, downtown Los Angeles, downtown Skid Row, 6th Street, here with Mark Leda. Many of you know Mark from his YouTube channel, Soft White Underbelly. Mark gets into people's stories, those living on the fringes, drug addicts, prostitutes, gang members, and C-Note, C-Note who knows the streets really well down here. We're gonna walk around. We're gonna get an understanding uh, from Mark and C-Note about and the homeless and Corey. Corey's <laughs> over there on the bike. These guys, these guys know Skid Row as well as anybody. Everybody makes a big deal about how we need to fix homelessness. And in, in, in LA, it looks really awful, right? You have homeless people living all over the city, right. even, even in some really expensive, really nice neighborhoods. But I don't believe the problem is homelessness at all. Because if, you know, if you peel back the layers, you've got drug addiction behind the homelessness. Okay. Like all these people are drug addicts. You, you have a hard time finding some that aren't. So then, then you say, oh, the problem is drugs. Like Nancy Reagan said, the problem isn't drugs. So you peel back another layer, and then it's mental illness behind that. Okay. And then you can say, oh, the problem is mental illness, but what, what causes that? So you peel back another layer, and you've got the childhood trauma, the, the, the broken families, all that kind of stuff that people went through. When people say just give people homes, you're, you're saying that's not a solution, or that's part of a solution, or what do you think? Well, no, I mean, it, 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 give, it provides a little bit of stability for people, right. and that's not a bad thing, right? But like up in North Hollywood, they, they built these like mini homes for people. They, they provide uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and you, you, it's, it's basically free housing. Yeah. Like they've been giving people free housing here. You know, this, this building is full of drug addicts, that's basically. That's all free. Is the white guard free? Yeah. See, you note? Know? Yeah, so, so it's basically free housing for people, and there's lots of that down here. Or, or it's like, you know, $50 a month or something like that. What about drug rehab? Isn't that going on down here too? Or? Yeah, I mean, there's that. The problem with rehabs is, is there, to, to, to do it right, I think, is, is tremendously expensive. Like hundreds of thousands a year, I would think. Per, per person? Per person, yeah. yeah. Don't film down here. If the camera's pointing at us, is it, is it all right? Yeah. Or? It, it'll be all right. If we get shot at, we'll just run. <laughs> Zeno, what's the story with this street? Crack related. Crack related, okay. Yeah, certain, yeah, certain like the like San Pedro where we just crossed, that's all spice. You can find some other drugs too, but 99% of it is spice. This this national theme going on here. Vote. Yeah, this, this street is uh, most, mainly crack. There's other there's other areas that are fentanyl. So you're saying each street takes on its own identity. Oh yeah. Drugs. Yeah yeah. The surface is housing. You peel back. You peel back. You peel back. Basically, it's upbringing. Is that what it comes down? To? I mean, I, with the broken families, you can boil that down to like poverty or or the greed of the rich, and, and you, you you just keep peeling back the layers. But when you when you get to the very very bottom of it all, I think it's just loving each other. It's just love. Right. Love is the answer to all this kind of stuff. Like L LA is, is putting people up in housing. I think they're just doing that just to make it look better. Okay. Because it's embarrassing. You come to LA and there's homeless people everywhere in front of your nice house. So that makes it really embarrassing, right? So if you put them all in housing, then it looks better. Here's a block that's full of tents. And this is where, how all of Skid Row used to be. Okay. Now there's probably 40% of the tents are gone because these, these people are in housing. It was way worse than this. Much worse, yeah. At a street level, it's actually looking. Oh, it looks. Right it, it, it's it's much better right now. But that Skid Row, Santa Monica, where I'm staying, it's worse than I've ever seen it. Yeah, I don't think they. I don't, I don't think they have the same housing there. And a lot of people that left here, or maybe got housing, or got kicked out. Maybe they relocated to Santa Monica or Venice or North Hollywood or Hollywood. So is it fair to say though there are different types of homeless? Those that have the drug addiction yeah. issues, like you're saying. And then and then mental illness is a huge part of mental. it. Mental. I mean, Some people honestly fall hard on their luck, yeah, though. Man, how tall you is? <laughs> Six four. How tall you is? 
See, I mean, a lot of the problem is also education. So because that guy's probably not going to get a job at a, at a fast food restaurant or anywhere else, hardware store, because he right. can't really speak intelligently, then, then it's just going to make his life harder. So the opportunity inequalities, the education inequalities, the poverty, the broken families, the broken homes, all that stuff leads to the right. mental illness, which leads to a drug addiction, which leads to homelessness. You're well known in these parts. Not everywhere. I mean, some people, I mean, you've seen some people say hi to me. There's like an endless supply of people for me to interview here. I could do this for the rest of my life. and never run out. There's new people coming in. I'm right down the street from the, bus, the Greyhound bus station. There's more people right. coming all the time. You've been down here 20 years, right? Yeah. Can you talk on camera? Is that cool? Oh. Is there a hierarchy, like someone's in control of one street, someone's in control of another street, or? I don't know, but I can't talk about that. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of things can't be talked about. <laughs> yeah. Is there like a connectivity? Is there a family element to it? We're all family. Brotherhood. We're all family around here. It's one big dysfunctional family. Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> basically. So you never go lonely? In Skid Row? Um, never. Everybody, to a certain extent, they're all lonely. That's why they're down here, more or less. Lonely inside, lonely lonely mentally. You know what I mean? It, it's, it's an element of a lot of things. That's why our people down here, it's just not drug use. And the drug use is just a, it's a, a, a way of escape or not really deal with the issues or what that's going on in here. Right. You know, and in here. There's no easy solution, obviously, but what yeah, do you... The, the, what solution do you... Is, it, the, the, the solution is up to the individual, because I can't make a decision for the in, next individual. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. They, gotcha. it, ultimately, it has to, they have to make their own decisions within themselves, you know what I mean, to, to uh, either deal with the issues or not to deal with it. You know, this is the result of not dealing with it. Same with me, you know what I'm saying? A lot of issues I have, I, I, I choose not to deal with, so yeah. I, I choose to do run around here and act retarded. It's just a temporary fix. This kind of makes the issue even worse. So. How, how often do you use, uh, if I may ask? I don't know, every other day, maybe every day. Depends every other on, day. Depends on my mood. Is fentanyl really come in? Yeah, fentanyl came in here and just, just destroyed everything. You know, it's killed a lot of my friends, so. I'm sorry, man. It's like people that don't even use fentanyl or heroin. Oh, They've been, sorry. some people, they be mistaking it for crack and, yeah. and smoking it and dying and just all kind of crazy stuff, so. Mark, I'm going to clip you up. Hey! <laughs> I didn't recognize you. Some pungent smells coming through. <laughs> yeah. So no, uh, yeah, you, no toilets around here, right? Yeah, the smells are pretty, pretty horrible. Pretty hardcore. I, I don't bring my shoes into the house. I, where, I leave. Where do people go number two? In the bathrooms. The where corner. are the bathrooms? Paint bucket. Oh, yeah, paint buckets, gotcha. corners, baskets. Who they don't? Oh, oh. There, there's that one woman that does it right, right here. She'll do it right here, right in front of you. Yeah. Right. Just take a dump. Yeah. And then, um, oh. got the refresh center right here. We have to take showers, wash your clothes, use the bathroom, all that type of stuff. There's showers over here. Yeah, right here. Okay. Over. Yeah, they, they, they call it the refresh spot. Okay. And you can go there, take a shower. You can charge your phone. You wash can do clothes. do your laundry. For my project, I was going to Appalachia. Like okay. I, I started doing that like a year or two ago. Okay. Trying to get away from all the drug stories. I, I'm not that interested in drugs. Okay. But I, I, I I'm on, I'm down here on Skid Row, and all, every story is involving drugs. So it looks like I'm a drug channel. So. I wanted to get away from that, so I figured, you know, I know about Ash Appalachia, let me go there and get some, like, interesting stories. But I go there, and, and it's like 99% drug stories there. It's even worse than here. And they're not doing, they're not able to do anything about it. Here you've got the missions that are giving uh, free clothing. You, all, uh, you know, Los Angeles is a wealthy city. A lot of people are donating nice clothing. That's why you see these interviews with people that are dressed really well on right, my channel. Right, But they're homeless. They're, they're as broke as, as you can imagine. And then, and then the missions provide, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Right. And there's all kinds of other services, mental health, all that, all that kind of stuff is, is available here. But in other parts of the country, they don't have any of that stuff. If you were homeless and drug addicted, wouldn't you rather be in California where it's 42 degrees at night rather than Chicago, which is... So it's attracting people. 10, 10 degrees. It's tr attracting people from all over the country? Yeah, I think so, yeah. I've heard many, many stories of people like, how'd you get here? Like, well, the police state department in my city kicked me out and they put me on a one-way ticket to yeah. LA on a Greyhound bus. bus. I've been here for 12 years. Yeah. And I don't see it getting any better. You know, with fentanyl, it seems to be even worse. M more people dying. Right. The, 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 the homeless, homeless community is bigger, you know, it's more spread out over the city. You know, 12 years ago, it wasn't in Santa Monica and Venice like it is today. Mark, in your content, you shot thousands of videos. You're super prolific. 4,000 so far. 4,000, okay. In my content, which I've done a small fraction of that, we go into a lot of issues in society. Yep. One thing I find is I don't really ever offer many solutions. I try, but... You know, it's easier to show the problem than to show the solution. Yeah, yeah. Here's, here's a great way to look at it. Here on Skid Row, it's, it's I, I would say, for 90 to 95 percent of these stories of these people came from homes where dad was in prison, mom was on drugs. 
and they had no role models. They had nobody to look up to and say, wow, I'm going to be like him one day. Right. Like I did. Right. I could, I could have been a doctor, a lawyer, could have been anything. But, you know, through my mom, I met somebody who was a photographer, and, and it, was, it was like, oh, my God, I want to do that. And I did it. It was easy for me. I had great role models, had great opportunities, had a great education, had, had, a, had a stable household. These people had none of that. And until they get that, not these people, but their kids or maybe their kids' kids, nothing's going to change. So that's, that's what has to happen. I made an intro to my channel where I said the government is the answer, but I don't even know what the government's going to do it. I almost think you and I have to do it. I'm showing it, but I'm not doing it. Well, I mean, that's, that's one way of doing it. Like, my job is, I, I can't take the responsibility of helping each of the 4,000 people I've interviewed. And if I only, let's say I help those 4,000, what about the 40 other thousand that, that are out here that I didn't interview? Right. They don't, they don't get my help. <laughs> so so I, I can't possibly help 4,000 anyway. So I can create the awareness like you're doing mm -hmm. of, of the problem. And perhaps somebody else can take the job of maybe helping them get stable and be, someone else can help them with the food and someone else can help them with education and, and, and as, a, as a society we can probably make some it's changes. Not, it's not just a money problem. Well I mean money is, is always the, a huge factor in all these kind of things. It's a complicated complicated problem and I don't think it's an easy fix and, and human nature is to go let's just find the easy solution to this person just get a, get a job and stop doing the drugs. It's a much deeper problem. Yeah you know, it's going to require a lot of a lot of understanding and that's what I'm hoping to do in my videos. I think you're doing it with yours and uh, and that will open up our minds a little bit and then maybe we can do something to solve the problem. But it's not going to be just like, oh, we just need to provide housing like the, like L.A. is doing. It's violent down here. Yeah, you know, there's people getting killed all the time. Like if we if we didn't have a C-note here, would it be a different story? At, 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 at night, we, I wouldn't want to do this with you. Two, two white guys walking down here at night are, are you know, I, I've had guns pulled out of my face. I've had I've been, I've been conned and robbed every which way you can imagine. Over the years, I've learned how to avoid those situations. Oh, yeah. and I've gotten better at that. But uh, I find these stories fascinating and interesting. I also feel like if we're ever going to change it, we're, we're going to have to understand it. And, I, and I'm, I'm helping facilitate that. I've learned a lot by doing these talks. And I think if you watch my channel regularly, you'll, you'll, you'll learn a lot about how, oh, yeah. how things work or how things are not working. A, a very good friend of mine who, who I've known for decades, she reminded me when she saw what I was doing with this channel. She said, it's funny because <laughs> I remember going out to dinner with you once and you, we were at a street corner in the car. We were in traffic and stopped at a red light and there was a homeless guy out there panhandling. And I just mum mumbled under my, underneath my breath, like, just get a job. And she reminded me that I said that. And I don't doubt that I said it. I mean, I still have those thoughts today with some of these people, but when you hear the most horrific stories you can imagine about their childhood. I had a woman come up to me and I said, you know, just, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll just kind of have them run through their story a little bit so I get to know what their story about is before, before I bring them in. And she goes, well, I was, I was molested by my dad when I was 10 years old. And I, I had his child when I was 11. That's not a good thing. I don't care how you slice it. That's a, that's a hell of a way for a young girl to grow up. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars trying to fix these people that are broken. And I don't even know if that'll work. I spend every dime I make on this channel helping, helping people like that, but I think it's a waste of money ultimately because the real, if you really want to make a difference, a lot of this, constantly. If you really want to make a difference, what? <laughs> That's what you hear in the background of my videos all the time. If you want to make a difference, I think the, the way to do it is to think long term. Maybe help their kids or their kids' kids, and, and, and the way to do that would be stabilize the, the households in, in these poorer communities around the country, not just L.A. I mean, I'm, I'm talking nation, nationwide and probably worldwide. Right. And that, that'll help the family stay together. You know, wh why is dad in prison? Because he had to do something illegal to make some money. And why, why is mom on drugs? Well, she was probably, you know... Why couldn't he do something legal to make money? He doesn't have an education. Gotcha. He didn't have any opportunities. He didn't see any role models of things that you could do to make money. He just saw... You know, you hear it in my interviews all the time. I just, you know... The only thing they ever saw were, you know, drug dealers, gang members, pimps, and some so kind of... If this is your father, and this is what you see as a kid... Yeah. What do you, how are you going to become a, a doctor or a lawyer? Right. I know it happens. I am sure there are stories where that has happened. Yeah. But those are, those are the exception. The oversimplified su solution to a super complex issue would be get the kids, basically go in hard on the resources with the kids. 
that, that's that's my opinion on, on so how to solve can, the problem. You can change that cycle, and maybe 20 years you'll start to see some results out of that. That's that's what I believe, but I, I don't think that trying to fix all these poor, broken people on the streets is, is going to hey, amount camera. to anything good. It calls the fuck to me. Take a picture of me. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't I don't I mean I understand these people need help, but but the only people I've seen really help themselves or really get improve their situation, especially when they're addicted, uh -huh. are the people who just silently and quietly did it by themselves. Right. There, there, there have been a few people that I've interviewed who just disappeared. And I, I get in touch with them and they like, so what's going on? Oh, I, I went back to Chicago where he was from. Alex, one of the guys I interviewed early on, he got into a program uh -huh. and he's, he stopped using fentanyl, which is like the hardest drug to stop using. But he did it. He didn't do it because I gave him a ton of money. He didn't do it because somebody, you know, his family probably helped him. I'm sure they did. What's a D-Day? A decision-making day. Sometimes you just have a decision-making day where, you know what, I either I'm going to decide to do this or I'm going to decide to do this. You know what I'm saying? A lot of it is you have to change the way you think, you know what I mean, before you can make better decisions. I don't have know you what... ever had a D-Day? I have D-Days every day. Every day? <laughs> every day. But, but you're still on Skid Row. Yeah, because my I haven't made a decision to leave here. You know what I mean? I have to change my thinking, the way I think a little bit every day. Are you, are you scared to be somewhere else? No, never. But never a, lot, a lot of people are addicted to the streets. Yeah. They love it down here. You, you give Me? them an opportunity to leave. You give them housing, you give them a car, you give them a job, you get them everything they need. It's the wildness. I'm addicted to the wildness. And they come back here. I'm addicted to the wildness. I can wild out if I want to. If I wild out, you know, and, and, and we say regular land, it's consequences. It's a lack of responsibility that's attractive. It's, yeah. the, it's the freedom. It's the, it, I don't have to get up and do anything today except get my fix and screw yeah. off for a day. And that's, that's every day. And it, once you've been doing that for a long time, then it's like, oh, you want me to get a job and get a haircut and shower and get dressed and go to work and all that and pay taxes and all that shit? That. Oh. Cino is not your typical person down here because he is a little more more of an upstanding citizen than most, right? Yeah. You do have a roof over your head. You yeah. see, he's at one of the hotels here. So I could see a lot of these people, if you put them in a one bedroom in Santa Monica, they're going to come back. They're going to be come bored. Right back. They're going to be bored, right? They're yeah. going to come right back. Yeah. It's, it's like, you know, I hear this a lot with the uh, women, that, the people that work with uh, sex trafficked women. Right. And you get them out and you, you protect them, you give them everything they need to get their lives together, and they run back to their pimp. Why would they do that? Because they don't believe they deserve anything better. No, they don't have that sense of being needed. Uh, There's that too, yeah. Purpose? I have a family, so I have to keep going for them. You know what I mean? Okay, I can, kids. I can, I can totally all the way, yeah. I can totally all the way give up, but then what that's gonna do? Gotcha. You, you got kids? Mean? Yes. Okay. How many? Nine. Nine? Wow, you're prolific. I've been married. You know what I'm saying? I had three from my first uh, girlfriend and three from my wife. Then, like when we was in between those, I had a couple of them. You know what I'm saying? So. Got couple you. girlfriends, but they, all of my relationships come, my kids come from a long time relationships. It's not that I was. Where, where are your kids now? They're down here? Yeah, they're here. Okay. They're not down here, no, but no, they're, they're, they're in L.A. Oh, they're in L.A. Yeah, gotcha. they're not down gotcha. here. Gotcha. Gotcha. No, I, as I said before, it's human nature to want to oversimplify the solution. Right. And just like, just like L.A. is finding housing for people, oh, and that's going to fix the homelessness problem. Well, the, the, the problem still exists. It's just they're in boxes now. Well, technically, they're in, they now have a home, so it's homelessness problem is fixed. Yeah, that's right. But but, but these people not. are they're still drug addicted, they're still broken people, they're still traumatized, they're still not healed from that. He's a good guy, yeah. Yeah, so I've got a good reputation down here. For a white guy, that's rare. Um, you know, you, you're not gonna solve these problems. You're not gonna fix what's broken in these people with money or even rehab. You see how, how often people relapse. So there's no guarantee that these people will get better if you give them all the helps, all the tools they need to, to get better. But, but if you raise the kids well and you love them and you, you give them the opportunities and the role models to, to live a better life, then most likely they'll have a better chance of that. But here's another thing that, yeah. that, that, that is controversial, but I think about this a lot. Look at the nature of, uh, of the, our planet. The coyote eats the rabbit. The coyote doesn't eat the rabbit and, and have to like think about it and, and regret it or feel any guilt. It's going to do it again tomorrow. You know, the hawk eats the, the snake and the snake eats the frog and everybody just is ruthless. And some are winners and some are losers. The lion wins when it, it kills the antelope and the antelope loses. That's the nature of the planet. So I'm, wh why would humans be exempt from that? No matter how much you polish humans up, put nice shirts on, comb their hair, they still work in those, in those ways. You think. I, I just think it's the nature of our, of our planet. You know, there, there are people who are going to thrive and, and their kids will go to college and they'll have great jobs and the great opportunities and they'll live great lives and there are others that will suffer and, and never have those chances. I mean, right. you, you want everyone to win, a, uh, every kid that, you know, competes in the swim meet to get a, a trophy? 
Well, that's what happened with the millennials, and now look what we got. Yeah, yeah, so it's an ugly truth, but the truth is some people win and some lose. What keeps you positive? Because you have a pretty upbeat, positive energy, Mark. Yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm eternally hopeful. How are the cops down here? The cops are great, to me. <laughs> to, I, I love the cops, but I'm sure there's other people that don't. But, but the cops tend to let people just do whatever they want. You, you'll see people smoking on a, on a, you know, smoking their pookie pipe, with, which is crystal meth or crack or, right. you know, with a needle. Right. And the cops roll by, they know what's going on. They're not, they're not looking to arrest anybody. As long as everyone's self-contained down here, they're, they're fine with it. And this is the police station right here. This is the Skid Row police station, and here's, here's drug addicts right here. Right across the street. They're doing drugs right here. They're doing them right here, yeah. And they don't, they don't have to hide from it. They'll, they'll do it right open in public. And you can't blame the cops either, right? What are they going to no, do? No, 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 like no. The cops are just trying to do what they can. You know, the jails are all full up anyway, but you're going to put more people in there, and now that you have COVID, it made the whole problem so difficult for everyone. All right, guys, so a little peek into a world perhaps you don't know. Uh, that's what I always try to do in these videos is get you into uh, a frame of mind, a way of seeing things, and uh, perhaps a different way of looking at the world. Mark, thank you. Peter, you do a great job. Thank you, thank <laughs> you. You do an awesome job. Thank you, you do an amazing job. Check out Mark's channel, uh, Soft White Underbelly. I'll leave the links below. He has an amazing ability Peter's to... the only channel on YouTube that I watch. <laughs> oh, wow, uh, thank you. Um, amazing way to look into the human condition. Uh, his cinematography, his questions, his all his... Don't film that way, don't film that way. Okay, don't film that way. <laughs> yeah. All his skills... There's a protocol here. ...are uh, unbelievable. Uh, so it got a little hot in here, guys. We actually have to leave right now. It says uh, Sino, right? We gotta go? Yeah. All right. All right. I think the natives are getting hostile. The natives are getting hostile. We gotta run. Thanks for coming along. Until the next one.